So a little bit ago I told Falcon Tales too. At the end of that video I told a horrible story that a co-worker had told me. Imagine my surprise when people started linking me to 4chan, to a green text page containing a similar story. I was a tad annoyed and asked him why he lied to me the next day. He proceeded to tell me that the story was real and even called his friend on the spot and he retold the story. Is the story real? Well, I don't know. Take it with a grain of salt, but since there is a chance that story isn't real and may have just been borrowed from 4chan, I decided I would tell you guys some of the worst stories that I've ever been through. Now, I know these are real because I was there. I'll go ahead and start this list from least to greatest. So back when I worked at Fred Meyer, I worked at the register a lot. It was very boring, and though I was mostly alone and rarely had to deal with anyone, it got old pretty fast. One night was extra slow, and I wasn't paying much attention when this girl walks up and places a 12-pack of alcohol on the counter. I look up at her and asked if she found everything all right. She smiled and replied with a friendly, yes, I did. This girl was beautiful. Let me describe this girl to you. She was about as tall as I was, Asian white mix. She looked more white, but you could tell she was of Asian descent. Adorable freckles, which I love. Great smile, kind eyes, long brown hair. She definitely looked like she worked out. And she was so friendly, so bubbly and cheery. Now, I didn't really pay much attention to that at that particular time. I just asked her for a driver's license since she was purchasing alcohol. As soon as I did that, she shot up and said, Oh, I need to run and get something real quick. I'll be back as fast as I can. She was gone for about 40 seconds. Now, I had her license in my hand. Did I look at her name? No. Instead, I looked at her age as that was my job. I noticed that she was born on the same year I was. When she got back, I said, So you were born in 95, huh? Me too. May I ask where you went to school? She smiled and said, Where do you think? I told her that I had attended Crater, to which she says, Oh no, I didn't go there. I went to North Medford. Ah, oh, right on, I replied. Must be where all the pretty girls went, huh? She started blushing and said, Aw, oh, thank you. Now, I'm kind of a flirt. I don't always do it on purpose, but she was really liking it. I was definitely going to ask her for her number, right? Well, as I ring her up, the phone rings. I answer it real quick, and my coworker is warning me about some customer who's trying to steal some stuff. Now, I just want to get off the phone with her. I don't care about some dumb thief, I want this girl's number. I finish ringing her up, and I'm trying to get off the phone, and this girl kind of sits there for a second. I look over at her while I'm still on the phone, and she says... I really hope I see you again. Me too, I said, and she walked away. She was gorgeous, and she was definitely into me. I should have just hung up the phone, but no, I'm a good little worker, aren't I? Did I ever see her again? No. A day later, I got the job at Falcon Northwest. Two weeks later, I was gone. Moral of that story is, if you hesitate, you get no date. The next story is about my father. As tech-savvy as I am, he never got anywhere near computers. He doesn't know much about the internet, which is fine, but this also means that he's not been exposed to online scams. Now, for someone like me, I could get an email scam and throw it out. Hey, you won a million dollars in a MacBook Air, which, seriously, if you want to entice me, don't give me Apple products. Regardless, this is what happened. My father got a letter in the mail that essentially told him that he had won $30,000. He calls up my mother and leaves this message. Hey. I wanted you to know that I just won $30,000. I got a letter in the mail that said instant winner and I just wanted to let you know that if you ever need anything, you can suck it. He hangs up. Now I get home from work and my mother is laughing from that message. She tells me about it and I start laughing too. But as much as my parents don't get along, I need to call my father and tell him it's a scam. I give him a call and the conversation goes a little like this. Hey dad, hey don't fill out that instant winner thing, it's a scam. All they're trying to do is take your money from you. This is when he replies, yeah, Barry, I know. Oh, oh, you know? Good, yeah, okay. Yeah, they got me. Wait, th they got you? What do you mean they got you? I, I filled out the thing and, and mailed it back to them. Dad, how much did you give them? $2,200. Ugh, Dad. He then proceeds to lecture me about how I should stay away from these scams, and if I ever come across an instant winner pamphlet in the mail, just throw it in the trash. Uh, he means well. This last one is really bad. This happened back in high school. It was junior year, and a couple of my friends and myself were taking a nice bike ride. We are riding down the road, and we spot a stop sign. One of them picks it up and decides that he wants to keep it. Now, I'm not going to reveal their names because they actually made me promise to never tell this story, but it's my story too so they can deal with it. We continue riding down the road heading back to the kid's house. See, it's not exactly legal to take a stop sign, so he wanted to get it back home as soon as he could. I mean, nobody actually cared. It was broad daylight and we were riding down the side of the road. Regardless, we keep riding when we notice this dirt area with a jump. 
My one friend without the sign said, hey, I'm going to hit that. He rides at it full speed, hits it, screams, lands and rides back. My turn, I said and I hit it too. It wasn't a very big jump, but the slightest bit of air on those bikes felt like you were flying. I ride back to my friend with the sign and he decided he wants to hit the jump as well, but he did not want to let go of his sign. He rides at the thing full speed, hits it, screams just as we had, but he doesn't ride back around to us. See, from where we were sat, we couldn't see over that hill, so we waited a good 15 seconds for him to start riding back towards us, and he never did. We ride around the hill looking for him, and this is what we see. The stop sign was attached to a metal pole. This metal pole was sharp and jagged at the bottom where it had broken off. This jagged bottom part of the sign cut into my buddy when he hit that jump and he was laying on the ground, blood on his pants, on his arm and hand, and it was only as we had gotten closer that we realized the stop sign had cut open his ball sack. Not only that, but he was holding one of his balls in his hand. It was an awful sight. He went to the hospital and got himself some stitches, and as far as I know, he kept that stop sign.